Hey everyone, it's Nadine from Nadine Walks and I'm back with a video today to talk all about footwear for the Camino. Now, I think I've hesitated to talk about how to choose a shoe for the Camino and what's the right kind of Camino shoe because I've only ever walked in pretty much the same shoe for all of my Caminos. So I'm not really an expert on this. I haven't tried out different types of shoes and different models. And I always thought, well, I only know what I know. I can only speak to that. And while that's true, I've also learned a few things along the way. And I thought I would come here today to talk a little bit about shoes, different options, different things to consider. And hopefully some of this will be helpful to you. So I think for most pilgrims and most people, as they are setting off on a first Camino or planning for the Camino, they are wondering what kind of shoe should I get? And, you know, footwear is probably one of the most important things when walking a Camino. If you get your footwear right, then your Camino is going to go a lot more smoothly. So it is a pretty important topic. Um, I think as ever, Footwear is going to be so different depending on the person. So what works for one person and what they swear by may not work for the next person. And so just like I talked about when choosing a backpack, the really important thing is to try on different shoes and really kind of go with what works for you. So even if you hear everyone saying you don't need a hiking boot for the Camino, and you really don't, we're gonna talk about that in a minute. But even if you hear everyone saying that, you might find that a hiking boot works best for you. And if that's the case, that's what you should go with. So really kind of the best advice I would say, to, best place to start is to go to a shoe store, go to an outdoor store, try on a whole bunch of shoes, work with the salespeople there, like get their input, get your foot measured, walk around in different shoes, see what feels pretty good, and then buy those shoes and go out on practice walks and hikes to make sure that you're really finding something that fits your foot well. So that's kind of the first thing and where we're going to start. But I think even just saying that it's still really overwhelming when you're kind of at the start and knowing where to even start looking. And, you know, I, because I've been using the same shoe for so many years now, I've kind of forgotten how much I like really was overwhelmed in the beginning of this process. I actually just went back and was looking at um, some old blog posts that I wrote when I was training for that first Camino and kind of researching all my gear. And I wrote about going to REI, which is the outdoor store in the States that I go to for my Camino stuff. And it was my first time there when I was trying on shoes and I, I was really overwhelmed. I think I had at one point three different salespeople helping me and they were all really helpful, but they all had different opinions and advice. I had like stacks of shoe boxes all around me. I was trying on hiking boots. I was trying on hiking shoes. I was trying on trail runners. Someone maybe mentioned trying on a men's shoe. Like it was overwhelming and it did take me a little bit to find the shoe that I ended up with. So, this is and can be really overwhelming. So I'm going to right now kind of talk about a few different types of shoes that most people wear on the Camino and kind of try to give a few pluses and minuses in hopes that just hearing this information might kind of help you say like, oh, actually that one sounded good. Maybe I should start there. So generally, I think there are going to be four different types of shoes that you will see people wearing on the Camino. And that's going to be a hiking boot, a hiking shoe, a trail runner, or a hiking sandal. Um, some people go barefoot. I actually met a guy from New Zealand on my first Camino who was trying to do as much of the Camino as he could barefoot. But for the most part, I think we're not going to talk about going barefoot. We're going to talk about shoes. So of these four, I would say a hiking boot is the one that I think most people will probably say you shouldn't really be looking at and a hiking boot is really not needed for the Camino. Now, again, like I said, there are always exceptions to this. Some people wear hiking boots. They It's something that they wear kind of in their day-to-day -day life and on other hikes, they have hiking boots that work for them and they're fine on the Camino. But for the most part, the people who do choose to wear hiking boots on the Camino, a lot of them end up having some problems. And I've seen hiking boots discarded along the way. Um, I think, you know, in the case of a Camino, a hiking boot isn't needed because the terrain of the Camino is never 
kind of so bad or rough or rocky that it really warrants a boot. For the most part, you're walking on compacted surfaces, and so you really don't kind of need that heavy support of a hiking boot. For the most part, I think especially if you're walking the Camino Frances or the Camino Portuguese or the Inglés, kind of these more common, more popular routes, you really don't need a hiking boot. And then a drawback of a hiking boot is that they're going to be heavier. And I think, you know, certainly if you're walking in the summer, but even in the spring or fall on a hot day and your feet sweat, it's going to get that moisture trapped inside, which can lead to blisters. And so I think these are a lot of reasons that people who do take hiking boots on the Camino find that they may not be working out for their feet. So while you may see hiking boots and maybe this is a good choice for you and there are different reasons it could be a good choice as well you know a hiking boot is going to give you more ankle support and that may be something that you need and then that is a really wise consideration for the most part though i think hiking boots generally aren't recommended for a camino so then the other three we're looking at are going to be a hiking shoe a trail runner and a hiking sandal now, a hiking sandal, I'm, I can't really speak to that too much um, because, you know, I've heard a little about the pros and cons, um, but I don't know a lot about walking in hiking sandals. I do know that people use sandals on the Camino and again, we'll swear by them. So in this case, I would say for any of you watching this video, if you have walked in hiking sandals, please chime in in the comments and just provide some more information about, you know, how it works for you and what you really like about them. You know, I know a hiking sandal will be pretty light weight compared to the other two options. Um, if it rains, you know, yeah, your feet are going to get wet, but then they're going to dry out really easily too, more so than a trail runner or even a hiking shoe would. Um, some people will bring a hiking sandal and maybe a trail runner and kind of switch on and off depending on the terrain that day or the weather. But I do think bringing two pairs of shoes is going to make your pack weight, pack weight a little bit heavier. So there's that to consider as well. So those are hiking sandals. Um, trail runners I want to talk about next. Now, I have never walked the Camino in a trail runner, but this is a really popular option. And I think more and more people are using trail runners. And a trail runner, essentially, you know, it's like a sneaker, um, but I think the tread is just a little more like sturdier and there's more tread to these shoes than maybe a sneaker because you're going to be on different terrain, right? It's like for a trail. Um, but trail runners are going to be pretty lightweight, certainly compared to a hiking shoe. They're going to be lighter on the foot and they're going to have a lot more ventilation and breathability so that your foot probably isn't going to get as hot in a trail runner. Um, if it rains, you know, more likely that your foot's going to get wet, but also because there's a lot of ventilation, your foot and your shoes are going to dry pretty easily overnight as well. Um, there are a lot of great trail runners out there that people use. I just keep hearing more and more about how great they are for the Camino. And I think maybe one day if I ever decide to make a change, I might try out a trail runner. Maybe it was actually the shoe that I first bought uh, before my first Camino when I was in REI and overwhelmed with all those shoe choices. I ended up with a trail runner and I can't remember if it was a Solomon. I can't remember which brand it was, but um, it had felt pretty good on my foot in the store. And then I took it home and for a few weeks I went on practice hikes with it and um, it didn't require any breaking in, so that's a benefit to many trail runners. For the most part, out of the box, you can put them on your foot and go, and they feel pretty comfortable. Um, but for me, yeah, so they didn't require breaking in, but they, I just think the, the shoe that I bought wasn't the best fit for my foot because it was kind of rubbing against my pinky toe and just wasn't that comfortable. Um, and then also I didn't love the look of them on me and look, the kind of vanity aspect, right? Of how the shoe looks, that's probably should be the last of your considerations when looking for a shoe, but I just couldn't help but like look down at my feet and not love how they looked. And this is a bit of a side note for me, but, um, I, I really don't like shoe shopping and I never have. Uh, I have a pretty wide foot. So finding a pair of shoes that I thought were somewhat attractive or cute for my whole life was really hard because often the shoes I'd end up buying were had to accommodate my wide foot and they weren't kind of cute and pretty. So I just never have liked 
wearing shoes and shopping for shoes. I like wore flip flops for so much of my life because it was like I didn't have to worry about the fit. So I think that is one reason why um, it was kind of overwhelming for me to find a shoe that worked. And that first pair, it just felt like the story of my life. Like here I am with another pair of shoes that don't fit quite right. And I don't like how they look on me. And I just kind of got down about it. But then I went back to REI and I happened to try on a pair of Keen Voyagers. And the Keen shoe, hiking shoe, is the shoe that I got for my first Camino. Now, this is a slightly different model. This is the Targi or the Targi. Um, and at some point, you know, I used the Voyagers for the first like four years of walking Caminos. And then they might have changed a little bit, like the fit and how they designed that particular shoe because the one year I went to buy a new pair, they really didn't fit as well. So I did some research and the Targi um, was very similar to the Voyager and I tried them on and went with them. So this is the pair that I then got for my first Camino and I just loved them. One, I liked the look of them. It looked a little more like a hiking shoe. I just like how they looked on me. And so I just, I did care about that. So that was an added bonus. But the most important thing is that they fit my foot really well. So Keen is a brand of shoe that does do well often with wide feet. So if you have a wide foot, I would consider Keen, but there are others as well that can accommodate a wider foot. This just so happened to be the one that really fit my foot best. Um, I really like the hiking shoe. Well, you know, there's some benefits and some drawbacks. So we kind of already talked about this a bit with the trail runners, how the tra trail runners are a lighter shoe. Now the hiking shoe is gonna be a little bit heavier, um, but I found that it wasn't too heavy for the Camino. Maybe it's because it's the only shoe I've worn on the Camino that I've just gotten used to it, um, but it's not gonna be as heavy as a hiking boot. And so I actually kind of like that these are a little bit sturdier. And in my case, I keep going back to walk year after year. You know, I've hiked some of the lesser traveled Caminos on some terrain that's a little rougher. I've also done some hiking in England and Scotland on some trails where I was just happy to have a slightly sturdier shoe. So these shoes have just always worked for me. And when it comes to shoes on the Camino, at least for me, once I've found something that really works, that doesn't really give me blisters, that are comfortable, my feet don't hurt at the end of the day, like these shoes have been great for me. I haven't wanted to switch it up because I just don't want to risk maybe having a shoe that doesn't work quite as well. So I have continued to get these year after year. Now, one of the kind of slight drawbacks could be that, at least for me, these do take a little time to break in. Now I've had, I've talked to other people who have the same model and get the same shoe, the same Keen, and they say they can just, you know, from the box, put them on and start hiking and they're good to go. I have found that this does take a little bit of time to break in. So that's a consideration. But then another consideration, this is kind of a pro, at least for me, is that I find that these shoes hold up really well over a long Camino. So I've walked month long Caminos. In 2022, I walked for a month and a half and these shoes did really well. I, they didn't wear out. I mean, they're definitely more worn by the end of that Camino but they were still fine. I didn't have to replace them partway through my walk. And sometimes with trail runners, depending on what you get or how long your Camino is, you might find that they're really breaking down and you have to replace them. So that could be a benefit of getting a hiking shoe. So even though I haven't had to replace these on the Camino, I do get a brand new pair every single year. Um, and some people I think could buy a pair of these and have them last a couple years. But I think in my case, because I use these for the Camino, but also just in my everyday life you know I hike and walk almost every day and I just kind of stick with these Camino shoes because it's just what I like and what works best for my foot so I do find that at the end of the year and before my kind of next season of walking I do need a new pair of shoes and so I've been buying a new pair every year I most years kind of save the shoes and I line them up and I take a picture and I <laughs> just recently actually I've kind of finally broken in my new pair of shoes and kind of pulled out all the old pairs to take a picture. And I have quite the collection at this point. And I think I just want to keep doing this as long as I can. Like, I can't wait to see in another 10, 20, 30 years what this shoe collection is going to be like. So that's the shoe that I use for the Camino and I really like. Um, I do want to mention a couple other considerations when looking for shoes. And one of that is, should you get a waterproof shoe? 
I think generally here, most people would say you don't need a waterproof shoe for the Camino. Now, again, there are some people who walk with waterproof shoes and they love it and they're fine with it. And so if that's the case for you, it's totally okay. I think in my case, I would opt not to do, and personally, I'm not gonna do a waterproof shoe. One reason for that is if your feet sweat, and my feet do sweat when I'm walking the Camino, especially when I walk in the summer, a waterproof shoe is gonna kind of trap that moisture in, doesn't really have anywhere to go. And then, you know, with a hot foot and the moisture and then the friction of walking, that's what really leads to blisters. And so I just would worry that a waterproof shoe could lead me to get more blisters. Um, I also think if your foot does get wet when it rains and sometimes in really heavy rain or a steady downpour all day, even a waterproof shoe isn't always going to keep the water out. And then the problem there is if your shoes do get wet, a waterproof shoe is going to be really hard for to dry out. So even overnight or for a few days, a waterproof shoe might kind of stay pretty wet. One thing I'm going to jump back to my Keens. One thing that I do love is that these are kind of breathable you know they have a little ventilation but they also do a great job of keeping the water out and i think in a kind of light rain even hours of light rain i can walk in these and my socks and my feet don't get wet i really can only count maybe like a handful of days that water has gotten through soaked my socks and gotten my feet wet even in that case in the worst rain when my feet and socks have gotten wet these shoes do dry out overnight and i can remember my first day on the Camino Portuguese, where the rain, it was like windy, rainy, sideways rain. I was soaked to the bone. I thought there was no chance my shoes were gonna dry out by the next day, and they did. Another consideration is sizing. And I think you may hear, and most people are gonna recommend that when buying a shoe for the Camino, you wanna size up either a half size or a full size from your normal shoe size. And a lot of that is because most people, their feet are gonna swell when they walk all day. If your feet do swell up a bit, you just wanna make sure there's enough room in the shoe to accommodate that. If there's not, you're gonna get some rubbing and it could cause blisters. So I have always sized up by just half a size. You know, normally I am a size eight and a half, but for my Camino, I always get a size nine. Now, other people will say go up a full size. And again, I think this is something where it just depends on you and your foot and the shoe that you get and what's gonna work best. Um, but in my case, a half size works. And then the last thing I wanna touch on just briefly is lacing technique. Now, this is not something I know a lot about, but there are different ways to lace a shoe to accommodate maybe different things going on with your feet. Now, in my case, this was, again, before my first Camino, I think I was talking with a salesperson and I had some pressure and it was mostly my right foot, but there was pressure on the top of my foot when I walked. And the salesperson said, oh, what you can do is lace it a little differently. So I don't know if you can kind of see here in this shoe, but the laces, they kind of crisscross. And in this section, kind of right here, I skip one of the crisscrossing and I just kind of lace down. And that really allows there to be extra room on the top of the shoe so that when my foot kind of presses up there, yeah, it just kind of relieves some of that pressure. And then I also do this kind of like twisting thing with the laces right here, if you can see it. I can't remember why I do that. I just know that 10 years ago, the guy in the store laced up my shoes this way and I've been doing it ever since. So it could help locking the heel down. I'm not really sure. Um, but all of that is just to say that there are different ways and different lacing techniques that you can use on your shoes and it might be helpful. So, so that is all I have for shoes on the Camino. As ever, please chime in in the comment section below. You know, lately on these last few videos, you all have been coming in with such good information and tips and ideas in the comments. And I think this is another area where it'll be really valuable for others who are shopping for shoes and planning for first Caminos to go into the comment section to learn more. You know, I can kind of speak to what I know, what works for me, but so many of you have such great information and it's so helpful when you share it here. So thank you so much for doing that. Um, and thank you all for being here as ever. Hope you're doing well and I'll be back soon with more. Buen Camino.